This is version, goodness knows what, three probably of the uh, air bow. This is the receiver. This is the bow. You can see the bow has slots in it. Hang on. See these slots? Um, it's 3D printed in sections. I may be able to produce a better one using a laser cutter. This is the module anyway, the receiver module. So we've got um, a light chopper LED chopper here and there's a few features uh, worth mentioning um, there's a, a, a teensy LC board built in it's powered from the USB lead which currently is just plugged into my laptop and under here you see is one of these standard modules now these modules come in different widths this is a particularly wide one and that's quite important because when you put it into the 3D printed parts, you'll see they're designed so that no matter how you rub this bow, it doesn't actually rub against the sensor itself. If you look, the 3D print overhangs the sensor slightly here and here, and it also is slightly raised here relative to the sensor. So if you're sawing away with the bow, you don't actually wear away the actual sensor itself um, and I've done that um, whilst allowing a reasonable degree of bow movement you see you can have an angle the bow can go from that angle to that angle and it'll still work and up and down a fair amount and as you move it you see it's detecting it's flashing as it's detecting the LED being chopped and there's also an LED here which tells you if the bow is moving or stopped moving stopped okay and then the software you'll see the bow is stopped at the moment if I move it we get a string of data and then it stops and I move it back get a string of data and it stops now even if I lift it out it stops so what data is it sending out it's sending out um, a value for the volume between 0 and 127 so if I bow quite quickly you'll see we get bigger numbers here we are we're sort of here's 94 92 88 okay and it's sending those as if I can find the correct line of code hang on just a minute where are we nope uh, this is the key piece of information. It's sending a, a, a MIDI control change command or CC command. So it's sending command seven, which, it, which represents the volume. It then gives a value between naught and 127, where 127 is when you're bowing quickly. Uh, it's, it's defined as final volume here, and it's sending it out on channel one. So it's CC7, which represents volume in, in the MIDI uh, control change options, a value 0 to 127, which affects the volume and on channel one. So you can use this. So it's USB MIDI. So we're just, it's powered from the USB lead. So if you're running software, MIDI software, um, in theory, you can use this to control the volume of what it is you're playing notes on. So, um, you know, if, you, if you're building a MIDI violin or something, then you select the notes with your virtual string system. But the bow, the, the bow system is telling you the volume to, to play those sounds at. And it reliably tells you whether the bow is moving or not. Um, and this is the result of several experiments with different systems. I tried using an infrared rangefinder here, firing this way and it would actually reflect off your hand and measure the distance as you moved the bow. The problem there was error rejection. Um, it couldn't detect reliably if the bow was moving slowly or stopped and it would spit out readings that suggested it was moving when it wasn't, just a little bit. And of course for a musical instrument that's not good because it, you'd get little beep 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 noises um, as, as if you were moving the bow slightly virtually. I also used optical flow sensor firing this way against a bow which had speckle patterns on it. Um, that was spectacular failure, although I did use the cheapest optical flow sensor available on the hobby market 
so you could do it that way um, I tried a couple of other methods oh yes I tried using an accelerometer um, that's been tried before by others I actually had an accelerometer and a gyro um, uh, and I think it had a compass module as well and it, again it was to do with error rejection um, it wouldn't reliably detect that your bow had stopped moving completely and you wanted no sound to come out using the chopper method um, it's it's very reliable it's also extremely low cost these sensors are and as I say it gives you a certain amount of movement um, this bow could be improved as I say probably by laser cutting it um, but but this is um, my sort of idea of a hobby module that you could bolt onto your musical device you see I've given you bolt holes so you can bolt it onto the top of your virtual violin or whatever it is you're trying to make just to experiment with so I hope you will like it